what's up everybody on today's episode of the hashtag blackout podcast stop what you're doing because i'm about to ruin the image and the style that they used to i look funny this is not the real humpty dance but you know what i'm saying we're back and at it again with some fun foolishness that's all i gotta say don't get your booty hole dipped in lava all this and more on this episode of the hashtag blackout podcast <laughs> Here we go. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to episode 107, Cien y Siete. I hope that's right, Spanish, for the hashtag Blackout Podcast. I'm Jared. I'm Jay. And we're back in edit again. Jay, how's it going, man? It's cool. Cool. Exhausted. But it's all good, man. Just living life. (laughs) Ain't much more I can say. Yeah, you told me you... You told me you was up till 3 o'clock in the morning last night. What were you doing till 3 o'clock in the morning? Uh, just, I mean, or, I got up early. Of course, I get up early every single day, but mm-hmm. it's just uh, this past week, man, it's just been work. I got projects. I got editing. I got my personal projects. I got work, everything, man. So yesterday just uh, found myself like, sitting down for five minutes and I dozed off at about, I don't know, maybe two, maybe two o'clock and I didn't wake up until close to six. So nice. just up all night long, couldn't go back to sleep. So yeah, yeah, but yeah, and it's going to be the same thing again this week, today, just constant copious amounts of work, but yeah, I ain't complaining. Work. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. understand. understand. All good, all good. Yeah, this uh, this week was a uh, it was a busy week at work. Um, just a lot of stuff going on. Um, my job is doing all kinds of crazy transitions. My position, I guess, is doing all kinds of crazy transitions within itself. So, uh, growing in some places, shrinking in some other places. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, it's it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, That's cool. but yeah, man, this, this has been, uh, you know, uh, one of those weeks this, this week, I'm going to tell you what, this, this is one of those weeks. or this is one of those months, the month of October that I normally love because in sports you have college football, you know, really hitting its stride. You have the NFL obviously really hitting its stride as well. Uh, then you have the baseball playoffs, which I'm a big Yankees fan. Uh, so go Yankees. Um, and then, uh, you know, you have basketball season starting up. And, you know, this week we got to see the uh, LeBron-less Cavaliers, which are pretty much led by J.R. Smith now. Uh, mm-hmm. And I guess just last night, um, you know, just last night, J.R. Smith of the Cleveland Cavaliers, you know, uh, the guy who, you know, doesn't know to just go ahead and take a layup uh, when he can or, you know, pass LeBron the ball. Uh, at the end of a mm-hmm. playoff game, um, or just call a timeout, whatever you want to call J.R. Smith. Um, you know, J.R. Smith uh, uh, got into a tussle last night with, um, you know, some of the Boston Celtics players, uh, and he sort of laughed in the face of Marcus Smart, who, uh, if you don't know Marcus Smart, uh, he's been in the league for a few years. Um, he's a forward, small forward, power forward, guard. He plays a lot of different positions for the Boston Celtics, but he's that energy guy. He's that guy that comes, you know, either off their bench or he starts, you know, depending on the, the, the game, the situation. And he'll be out there sort of, you know, mixing it up, you know, trying to trying to annoy the other team, uh, you know, trying to play all those hustle plays, you know, get the rebounds, you know, uh, dive for the ball and throw it back in bounds, uh, you know, and get under your skin. Uh, so Marcus Smart jumped in there and tried to push J.R. Smith as a part of this tussle that he had and J.R. Smith just stopped and just laughed and it laughed in his face and basically after the game he was like you know you act like you're tough you know but you lead the league in flops you know how you gonna be uh how you gonna lead the league in flops and then try to be a tough guy that don't go together so it's just funny to me when when stuff like this happens and it's funny when you have you know basketball players uh you know uh you know getting getting tussles like this because it's 
I don't know. I don't know. It's it's funny because, you know, in the off season, they're all hanging out going on mancations. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when the season mm. starts, you know, they get in fights. So, yeah, man, this is one of my it's one of my favorite times of year. And it's October, you know, I which I think is the best month of the year. I know that, you know, you you have like May and, you know, your anniversary month and September or whatever. But October. For me is the best month because it's my birthday month so shout out mm. to all the Scorpios out there Scorpio season is almost upon us yes yeah, you yeah. and Drake <laughs> you know hey you know great uh, you know great minds in history you know are, are always always coming in several months of the year October being one of them or great actors whatever you want to call it <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, man, um, this week, uh, uh, you know, this week we had a one's got to go. Um, and uh, it was pretty interesting uh, just because some people think uh, that I left out something in this week's one's got to go. Uh, so this week's one's got to stay, actually, one's got to stay Thursday, Wheezy edition. Which Carter are you keeping? And so I put the Carter one, the Carter three. The Carter Four and the Carter Five, um, yeah, and you and quite and you know a couple other people's like Carter Two, where's Carter Two? And I was like, you know what? I only have four spaces, and what I wanted to do was put two of his most recent Carters with two of his older Carters and compare them <laughs> the, and see what people think. The two was older. I only have four spaces though. <laughs> well, well two is older two, than four, three. Five. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> Nah, I, I like I like Carter Three because that baby on the front, you know, I like that, that baby he with had the pinky baby ring on the front, <laughs> pinky right. ring and the suit. I love it. You know that reminds gotcha. me of all them Olin Mills days when I was a kid. Anyway, so <laughs> don't worry about it. Hey, you know we had some votes for the Carter Two, so whatever. So yeah, go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, read the comments. All right, from this one. let's see, let's see. One's gotta go. Well, one's gotta stay Thursday. Wheezy edition. All right, Ledge DBS says definitely the first one. Quarter Wolf says it's out of one and three. Starting Five Pod says Black is hot. That's the only Wayne album that will stay. That will ever stay to me. True that. Let's see. Chi Ali says the Carter one that one Gilly the Kid wrote. And then uh, Keith J88 says currency wrote for Wheezy on that one too. Let's see. Hunt, uh, H. H. Reven Hunter. Ah, uh, hell. Oh, I can't. Sorry. The Carter two, no question. Hashtag Mo Fire. Fade I Key says the Carter three. Everything was laced in the scene. See Shanna Pepper says three. Keith J eighty eight says Carter one. Black LTD Radio says salute one. And matching icons anime says little heart emoji. Oh, uh, little heart emoji to you too. So yeah, that's it. That is it. Okay, so we got more. Uh, really, we got one five to three for one. Over number one got I guess the Carter one got five votes, mm-hmm. and three got three votes. The Block is Hot got one. Carter two got one. Um, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, thank y'all for the comments. Uh, you know, thank y'all for the votes. Much appreciated. I mean, what if what if I did this? What if I just put like the worst albums, you know, and said which one you keeping out of these terrible albums? Mm-hmm. You just gotta pick from what you got. So hey, I appreciate that. That could work. I appreciate somebody saying the block is hot. Uh and yep. Carter too. You know? Could have said there's, lights there's bangers out. Lights on everything, really. Yeah, there's bangers yeah. on everything. So Jay, which one do you pick? Out of the four that yeah. you I don't know. Maybe. And then the one you really <sighs> want. <laughs> the one I really want is none I really want, but Well, I mean, I can't choose the block as hot or lights out. <laughs> so let's go. I'm trying to remember one. What was on one? Crap. Screw it. Let's just go one. I don't think it really matters. One. Great. Yeah. I'll take three. I'll take three. All right, cool. 
Other thing we had this week was, uh, other thing we had this week, I guess we were challenged by uh, the Codex Prime podcast, Mr. Bird from the Codex Prime podcast, uh, to do this, uh, you know, what is it, this like a 10-day movie challenge situation. So today we're actually going to be on day six, so I got to go ahead and post the movie. Um, But yeah, man, uh, you know, your pick so far, uh, you did Blade day one, I did Coming to America day two, you did Warriors day three. I did Half Baked day four, uh, and then you did Akira uh, on day five so far. So I'm gonna have to drop my sixth one. I have a few ideas in there, but yeah, man, uh, what do you think about this movie challenge? Um, you know, and then everybody else that sort of spawned off of this uh, and their picks. You know, I see the Kung Fu Driving has some good picks so far. So, uh, yeah. what do you think, man? When when somebody gives you a movie challenge like that, your ten favorite movies, are you going to like? I don't know, are you going to like your top ten or your top five, whatever, all time? I'm, or are you going no, to I'm, I'm just going to movies that influential? Uh, I'm honestly just going to movies that I enjoyed in my childhood. I mean, of course, there's a ton of movies yeah. I enjoyed growing up, but you know, these are just some of the ones that come to mind. And I did challenge yeah. Kung Fu Driving by Kid Cast the first day. So yeah. they they have been or Jeff from there has been posting up, but yeah, um, that's pretty much what yeah. I, I'm doing. I'm I'm not gonna go. I guess I don't I don't want to say typical route, but I know mm-hmm. we've already we've talked about coming to America, and of course that's you know that's a, a staple to you. Yeah, and I like I love I it too. Cannot leave that out ever. Yeah, yeah, as for and as well as half bake as well. Um, so I'm just trying to go to some things that I know a lot of. A lot of people have heard of, but they're not like those movies that talk get talked about a ton. You know, of course, Akira yeah, gets talked yeah. about a lot on the anime side of things, but you know, Warriors kind of flies on the yeah, radar, but, but it's still good. Blade Two, I thought yeah. was better than Blade One, uh, personally. You know, um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, those, and I got a got a couple more in the bag too that. That people will probably not uh, know about a ton, but yeah. yeah. Does does a does a Kim Kardashian sex tape count as a movie? If you want to, <laughs> I'm just playing. If you want to. <laughs> nah, hey, that, ain't got that. To you. Um, yeah, I ain't got that. Nah, I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop some some good for for uh, the sixth day. But yeah, I think I think they're pretty cool. It's interesting, you know, just checking out people's picks, uh, you know, and as far as uh, you know, movie because everybody, you know, has a different upbringing. Everybody has a different story. Everybody is influenced by them differently, and everybody picks movies in this top ten thing, uh, you know, differently. Some people pick it like this is my top ten of all time. Some people, you know, sort of you know pick it. Where they're like, you know, check these out because you hadn't seen these before. You know, some people are just, you know, more influenced by recent, uh, you know, recent movies. Like, you know, I definitely have thought about putting Black Panther in there at some point in time. uh, Just because, you know, it sort of transcended and and changed a lot of things, uh, you know in the superhero culture and really in black movie culture. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, in general and just it's short time. So, you know, yeah. Speaking, speaking of movies, some people go through, uh, huh. so I finally, finally got a chance to watch a uh, few things. Finally got a chance to watch a wrinkle okay. time. Um, okay. I thought it was, I mean, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good for what it was. I ain't gonna say it was like, Oh my God! This is the best movie ever. Visually, it was great. Um, yeah, you know, storytelling was you know it was decent. I mean, I could see the central theme. I can't remember the book because the book was I mean it was so long ago that I even opened that book. But I mean, I, I guess I could understand why people had its issues with it, comparing it to the book and maybe some of the themes of that book. But I thought it was pretty. Yeah. I, th- I thought it was pretty good. Um, what else? Chirac. We finally watched Chirac last night. Uh, oh yeah, the okay. Spike Lee movie. That was uh, it has its, its ups and downs. Oh, good. Huh? Well, I mean, it had its ups and downs. I mean, it's the a good portion of it. I thought was interesting, and it had a really good message. 
uh, mm-hmm. going on with her. But then to going towards the end, I was like, "What? What is happening here?" Like Spike Lee just went way away from <laughs> from from what I felt the movie could have could have ended at. Mm-hmm. I was just like so confused yeah. there. But you know, anyway, yeah. Then the next movie I saw. I mean, it's a new movie on Netflix. It's not a Netflix original, but it's a. It was a really interesting movie. It's called Animal World. You know, it's a Chinese movie. But, you know, of course, there's like actors from different countries and stuff in there. And it's pretty much a central plot of it is this teenager, he feels he has something wrong with them. You know, in the beginning, I thought it, it looked like a... Uh, there's this character in his head that he he kind of, I guess, uh, shares some some traits of that was originally a cartoon character when he was growing up, and it looked like a samurai version of Ronald McDonald. And I tell you, man, that the opening sequence and the whole movie is beautiful. You know, as far as cinematography and stuff like that, for those people mm-hmm. out there who are in that, effects are great. But it's mainly this kid, okay. teenager. He's in debt. His mother's in the hospital, and like his family's like completely in debt. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of of uh, dollars there. But he gets offered to to go on this ship and play a game. And can you guess what the game is? One game that we played: that? rock paper scissors. Um... I was gonna say shuffleboard, like you said, invited on a ship. So, no, rock, rock paper, paper scissors. scissors. It's a crazy game of rock paper scissors, man. And mm-hmm. if you win the game, you know it's, it's a whole bunch of different rules, but it's a game of rock paper scissors mm-hmm. with cards. So you got twelve cards, mm-hmm. and you got let's see three three sets. You got rock paper scissors, rock paper scissors. You know, repeated twelve times. But anyway, yeah, they play that game and. Um, it's it's a crazy game of like manipulation and and got to use math and mm-hmm. all this other stuff but it's it's a dope movie that I need to try and finish today I didn't finish it yesterday but yeah it's definitely something people should check out So it's called Animal Lover? What? Where do you get lover from? <laughs> I say world. Animal, wait. <laughs> oh, okay, my bad. What are you talking <laughs> about? You, you got something you want to tell the people out there? No, I really am not the biggest fan of, of certain animals, um, especially when they poop on your floor, um, you know, and you have to clean it up, uh, you know. All sometime. right. Uh, and, yeah, but no. Animal lover. All okay, right. well, that's that does sound interesting. You should, you should definitely Except for the out. title is wrong. All right, that sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, I uh, I didn't I didn't see anything new this week. Um, I do want to see the new Venom, uh, just just because I want to see it. I like Venom uh, as a character, so I, I do want to go and see it and see you know what Marvel what is like Marvel Sony combo. Is that right? Um, it's just a Sony, or is it Marvel Fox combo? Uh, I think it's just Sony. Okay, well I want to go and see what they did to it. Um, see if they mess it up, or you know, see if it's see if it's good so we'll see and then uh, yeah so I, I need to go see that sometime soon and I guess approve it for my son's viewing uh, you know if you will uh, and then um, or basically say if I want to see it again I guess that's sort of how that works uh, and then um, what's the other one so yeah the Aquaman trailer just dropped do we want to talk about that after commercials uh, whatever alright we'll Let's talk go. about it right now Let's talk about it right. right now talk about it right now let's knock it out so, yeah, Aquaman trailer just dropped. Jason Momoa as Aquaman, reprising his role from uh, Justice League. Uh, it's a five-minute trailer, man. <laughs> it's a long trailer. But then again, you know, if you were sitting down in a movie theater watching it, it'd be about right. Yep. Um, so, yeah, man, what did you, uh, uh, after seeing this trailer, you know, what'd you think, man? What'd you think? Um, I still think DC got there their storytelling film I don't know sequencing skills like all out of whack um yeah I it seems like it could be okay as far as action wise um 
I'm I'm still not a hundred percent sure on. I guess Jason Momoa's character, if you want to call it, or maybe his uh, I don't want to say acting abilities, but because I've seen some movies where he did fairly decent, fairly good, but I don't know. I just mm-hmm. think DC has their movies all out of whack. There's like yeah. parts in this move in the trailer there. I think there's like three different plots going on. So you got Black Manta showing up out of nowhere. You got the underwater kingdom of Aquaman. So I don't, I don't even know who some of the characters are. I didn't read, really read Aquaman growing up. But you got those. You got that that plot right there underwater, where I guess they're trying to bring back Atlantis. Uh, and then of course you got Aquaman and the other chick trying to find I don't know the uh, the it's, trident I think it's Mira Mira I believe yeah. yeah so yeah you got three different things going on I mean I'm glad it didn't really for five minutes it seemed like it didn't give a whole bunch away but I could be wrong I'd have to watch it again we've seen a lot in there but I could tell it's gonna be like a two two and a half hour movie but yeah, yeah definitely I mean it's gonna be action packed underwater scenes look pretty cool um and you know yeah what about you what do you what did you think oh man I I don't know man um it it was okay so Jason Momoa is a funny dude uh you know we learned that from Justice League yeah uh you know and he sort of continued it in this you know there's a couple of moments where you know he says uh you know some clever stuff uh and got a chuckle uh action wise yeah it looks like it's gonna be good action wise again um, and then I think what you know, I think what DC learned with Wonder Woman, uh, uh, they sort of pushed it to Justice League, and then I could tell from this movie, as far as showing landscapes, as far as showing, you know, like countryside, or you know, like zooming out and showing the whole island and watching action, you know, whatever that is called, um, you know, uh, the way the camera pans um, across the landscape, I think they, you know, I think they. I think that part looks good. It looks it looks right right now. Obviously, we'll wait and see when the movie comes out. But um, yeah, man, uh, there's some stuff that that was good. But then, you know, like you said about their storytelling, like you say about their sequencing, um, it's weird because you know, just I think just sort of like we talked about when we saw Justice League, you know, maybe they should have done an origin story, you know, for yeah for, for a couple everybody of these guys first. before they before they dropped them all on a. You know, on a on a um, on a combination movie. Yeah. You know? I mean, uh, it's uh, on a team up movie, whatever. It's it's crazy. So you know, you're just going backwards. You know, you go you, you go you like fast forward into the future, then you go backwards. I, I don't know why. It's silly. So um, whatever. Worry. But I, I do think they gave away. I don't know, man. I, I could have done without seeing uh, a Black Mantis so soon. In the first trailer, you got to bring him out. You got to show everything he does. Well, I think I mean, they gave this, away a little bit too much. I think this is like the second time action. they show Black Manta. Though. I mean, this was like. I mean, we knew he was coming, right? We knew it. But didn't they show him in the other but, trailer too? The one that was released I last year. That. Oh, I didn't even see that one. Yeah, I don't think I saw that one. Either way, either way. I mean, when is when does it say it's supposed to come out? When is it supposed uh, to? That's a good drop? question. I, I don't. I Let's don't know. Here. Probably this later this year, 20, maybe. 2018 let's see here December 21st okay so we got what two months I don't know I don't know I don't know dates and time and sequencing it just seems like um, you know that there's other movies that don't reveal as much until you get like a month out and that's when you get everybody really giggity about it so whatever man Um, I don't know I'll watch it I'll see it we'll see what happens uh, you know, Dolph Lundgren is in there as one of those underwater guys, so that's going to be interesting. Is it? Is he? Um, yeah, he is. Was that Dolph Willem Lundgren? Dafoe is in it. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Nicole Kidman, Willem Dafoe, you know, yeah, Patrick Wilson. For so some that. reason, I could have did without. I don't know why, but Nicole Kidman was just a Amber complete Hurt. surprise. Um, yeah, yeah. And then it's just funny. She's just chilling in a house like a deadbeat mama. Don't want to have nothing to do with his son. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that's the way. That's the way we do it. You know what I'm saying? Oh wait, that's the way they do it underwater. They don't care. They don't care about their kids. 
You know, fish 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 have kids and they leave them out there to die. Get eaten up by other animals. I don't know. No, but yeah, like you said, you know, they, they did seem like three uh you know, three different storylines. One was like uh uh or maybe even more, maybe four storylines cuz there's like the uh deadbeat mom, you know, broken family situation. Daddy and mommy don't love me, don't care about me. Then there's the national treasure slash Indiana Jones situation where they're trying right. to find, you know, his true origin. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, then, yeah, like you said, you know, they're talking about Atlantis. It looks like they have a fight for the, have like a fight underwater. Right. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, maybe that's, uh, you know, who's going to be king. You know what I'm saying? Sort of like the right. Black Panther situation. Challenge for the kingdom. Uh, you have people riding sharks. So there, what was that? What was the name of that movie? Was it called Street Sharks or that 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 uh, cartoon? Oh yeah, sharks. I, I know they what you're like talking about. Battle Sharks. I can't remember what it's called. That's what that reminds me of. I don't know, man. It, it's going to be interesting when this movie comes out. The underwater CG stuff that they put together. Um, that's going to be the question. How clean is that going to look? How good is that? I think look? I, I think they'll get that right. Question. They'll spend more money on visual effects than they will trying to get a story, right? I tell you that much. It's like typical DC, right? Yeah. So, I don't know, man. Uh, people, let us know what you think. Uh, you know, when you see it, if you've seen it, let us know what you think. If you're a big Aquaman fan, uh, you know, from, from childhood, um, let us know what you think. Uh, yeah, whatever. All right. Oh, and how could they let us know what they think, Jay? Hit us up, 385-3BLAKPC or 385-325-2572. Send us a voicemail there, or you could just hit us up on uh, email, hashtag blackoutpod at gmail.com. Or you could just hit there us up go. in the DMs on Twitter and Instagram. Goes down in DMs. It does. It do, it do, it do. Anyway... All right, cool. Well, we'll be back right at, right after this commercial break. What up, everybody? This is your boy, B-Rob, host of the Random Rambles of Rob podcast. While you're taking your break, using your hooks, rubs, and spices on your love boxes and everything, tapping them oh so gently and vigorously at the same time, I want you to tune in on iTunes, Stitcher, and everywhere else that you listen to your podcast and check out the hashtag Blackout Podcast. Why? Because we blacking out. Hey man, this is Chuck. We from the Whatever Man podcast, and we ain't out of here slanging and banging and doing wild shit, fucking with bitches and big ass white girls. We listening to the hashtag Blackout Podcast, and you should too, you degenerate bastard motherfuckers. <laughs> Hey folks, it's me, Big D. And me, Little R. From the Bro Rons Podcast. And you're listening to Jared and Jay on the incredible Hashtag Blackout Podcast. So when you're done here, check out the Bro Rons Podcast. You can find us on Potomatic, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, and Cornucopia Radio. Now back to Hashtag Blackout. And remember to tap your love box, baby. Oh yeah. <laughs> I just sound like a creeper. Oh, shoot. Damn it, damn it. I gotta get my fingers up out this love box, y'all. But, yo, anyway, this is your boy, the mayor, that DJ named Ace Five. Your mom's favorite fat guy from the deepest, darkest Africa, host of the Star Five podcast. And you're listening to my people's hashtag Blackout Podcast. Now, let me get back to tapping up this love box over here. Alright guys, we're going to talk to y'all about Hooks, Rubs, and Spices. Jay, what do you think about Hooks, Rubs? I I love Hooks, Rubs, and Spices. I put it on everything that I grill, all my veggies, everything that we cook inside our house. Hooks, Rubs, and Spices is the one that we go to. I'm sure you put it on just about everything you put in your mouth, right? That's pretty pretty much accurate. Yep. Man, (laughs) Man, Hooks, Rubs, and Spices uh, has four great flavors. The Mad Cow, the Smoky Burn, the Lemon Pepper. 
Pepper and the fan favorite Smoking Sweetness. Uh, you can find them uh, at Etsy.com slash shop slash hooks, rubs, and spices. You can also find them on Facebook and on Twitter and Instagram at Hooks Spice Rubs. Uh, if you go on there uh, and place your order, use the code MyHooks10. Uh, you'll get 10% off your order. Uh, so yeah, go on and check out some Hooks Rub. Hashtag We Smoke Meat. Hey everybody, so if you check the link in the description, you will see a link directing you to a free 30-day trial for Amazon Prime. Jared, how do you, do you use Amazon Prime? Yeah, I definitely do use Amazon Prime. Uh, Amazon Prime is great uh, because you get free two-day shipping, uh, free Prime video, Prime music, uh, and access to all the Kindle owners' learning libraries. So, like, nice. anything. If you're a Kindle owner, uh, yeah, man, uh, you can just download as many books as you need with that Amazon Prime uh, trial. And, yeah, like you said, it's free. It's a 30-day trial. Uh, so when you get to day 29, day 30, uh, and say, eh, this may not be the right thing for me, you know, go ahead and tell them you don't want it anymore. But if you do love it, if you order a lot of stuff from Amazon, like I do, uh, it's great for you because, yeah, it gives you, gives you that free Prime shipping and you get one click Amazon Prime ordering. So pretty stinking amazing. So everybody go ahead and check the description for the link to 30 day free trial to Amazon Prime. And we black it out. <laughs> All right, welcome back, people. Uh, We're going to jump into some relationship advice. We try to give you the best advice we can, even though 99% of the time it might be sketchy and questionable. So take it away, Jared. Sketchy AF. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah, man. So, uh, you know, just like Jay said before the break, uh, you know, if you want to uh, send us your relationship advice questions or your confessions, uh, you know, you could DM us on our Instagram or our Twitter, uh, ha- uh, excuse me, hashtag blackoutpod. You can shoot us an email, hashtag blackoutpod at gmail.com. Or you can call us at that 385-325-2572. If you want us to mask your voice, uh, if you want to be anonymous, let us know. Uh, we won't play it on the show or we will mask it on the show. Whatever you like, we'll just read the... Uh, you know, we'll just read it or just recite it uh, and just not say your name. So, yeah, man. So, first of all, um, <laughs> I got an interesting uh, relationship advice situation here. Um, yeah, just just sort of stay with me. So, this um, <laughs> this comes from Woomp There It Is underscore 19. Uh, Woomp, Woomp There It Is. Uh, let's see here. They, they titled this this message am I wrong for cutting ties and possibly suing my friend for allowing her cat to pass on HIV to my cat what I mean that just tells it all right hey, so here we go so stay with me yeah yeah cat pass HIV to another cat I don't know how that happens but here we go I know that the title is probably very confusing so please just read to start with I had no idea this was even a thing until a few weeks ago basically I had been out of the country for 8 months before I left I asked around to see if anyone could take care of my two cats while I was gone Amber told me she wanted to do it Uh, she did not tell me that her cat had FIV which apparently is the cat version of HIV or AIDS so feline uh (laughs) It, immunodeficiency is that what it is? No, virus. Uh, uh, what a feline. <laughs> <laughs> the the fiv instead of the hiv. All right, here we go. When I got back, I noticed that one of my cats had terrible diarrhea and stopped eating her food. I got scared and took her to the vet. I was floored when I was later told that she had FIV fiv. The apparent equivalent to HIV for cats. Okay, you already said that. I was confused, and my first thought was that she had sex with my friend's cat because she's never been around any other male cats. The vet informed me that it's possible and that it's also possible she could have got it from fighting with an infected cat. I confronted my friend who has told me that the cats did get into a few fights at first, but again, never told me that her cat was infected. When I told her that her cat had given my cat HIV, she was shocked. 
But all she had to say was that she didn't tell me because she didn't think it was a big deal or that it could affect other cats. That's bullshit. I, I'm sure, I'm sure when, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure when you find out your cat is infected, they would have told you the risk and it should have been common sense to me, uh, to tell me. I am livid. I just want to cry. My cat is now on medication uh, and that could only give her a few years. I can't afford this for much longer. I feel terrible seeing my baby with diarrhea or just not being herself. Is there a way I could... I could sue her for not disclosing this information to me? Am I being overly dramatic by wanting to end this friendship? We've been friends for six years, but I don't think I can forgive her for this. <sighs> so there you go. There's the question, mm-hmm. Jay. There's the question, know. people. You know? Mm-hmm. What no. do you mm-hmm. think? Is she wrong for wanting to sue her friend over this money she got to spend on her cat now? Man, uh, I don't know, man. It's just if you figure out your cat got FIV, wouldn't you just get rid of the cat? Well, I mean, let me not let me not say that. I'm, I'm not gonna say that. I'm gonna take that back because man, make Peter come at us, bro. No, no, because it's not just Peter. Because that that could be said about. You know, humans as well. If somebody has HIV in your family, which you just gonna get rid of, I ain't gonna say that. Dog, man, a, a, a animal and a person is two different things. It, hey, but I, I know what you I, mean. I, I, I know, I know what you mean. Though. Yeah, it's two different things, but they people get attached to their animals just like like humans. So I don't know, man. You, you her and her friend got a. <laughs> I don't know. They got to come to some kind of agreement or something. Uh, how much she says she sued just for the uh, probably just um, probably like for medical. the whole thing for all the doctor visits the medication yeah Sheesh. that's what it looked like yeah so who I knows how much that is I mean I know animal medicine is way too expensive so yeah yeah <sighs> I, don't, I don't know man I would never have thought about <laughs> any of that if I that's what I'm saying I don't know FIV, right? This is what I'm going to say. Okay. If you love this cat that much, you know, if your friend seems like she doesn't care, uh, you know, it, it's, it sounds like your friend is like, you know, it's not such a big deal. That's what it sounds like she's, you know, her sentiment is then, yeah, man, you know, uh, get that money, uh, you know, because you will have receipts to prove, you know, this is... You know, this is what you, uh, you know, this is what you now have to spend. The other thing is, though, you got to be able to prove, uh, you know, before you left that your cat didn't have this. So hopefully you had a, uh, you know, some kind of some kind of, uh, you know, one of the cat's checkups or blood tests or whatever they call that, you know, uh, not long before that. But uh, before you went out of town. But, yeah, I mean, you know, if your friend did this, obviously, without telling, you know, there, there's a little bit of negligence negligence there uh, because, you know, it's, it's just like, I don't know, man, it, it's similar to like a relationship, you know, when, when somebody has something, if they don't tell you, if they never disclose they had it mm-hmm. and then you catch it from them and you, and now you have all this stuff, you know, after unknowingly had it, mm-hmm. I mean, you should be mad. You know what I'm saying? You should seek some kind of, you know, some kind of, uh, 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 you know, recompense, some kind of, some kind of assistance because this situation was not upon you before you know before all this so i say yeah man soon you know if, if it comes down to it if your friend is not uh you know contrite and if your friend is not like okay let me help you out with some of this and i'm sorry you know then then you got to do something because if you can't afford it and if you want this animal to stay around you for as long as possible on this medicine then you got to do what you got to do otherwise let it go softly into the night you know what i'm saying <laughs> uh, drop them off at the animal shelter, you know, and up. you know they will do their thing, and you go and grab yourself a new cat. Um, I personally am not a cat person, and I'm gonna tell you why. You're not a dog um, person either. <laughs> I'm more of a dog person than a cat person, and that's a stretch. But no, when I was a little kid, this lady lived around the corner from us, crazy cat lady, right? That's what we called her. I kid you mm-hmm. not, she had. 30 cats 
and two toy dogs. A toy weenie dog and a toy bulldog. That's it. 30 cats and two little tiny dogs. She lived by herself. She was a crazy cat lady. She was definition of crazy cat lady. She had two sons who were, you know, who were well older than me. Um, you know, but I sort of knew of her sons or whatever. They were probably like, like in high school when I was, you know, like uh, in elementary school. Um, you know, so they're well older than us. But, uh, but crazy cat lady had a two story house, you know, nice, nice, good size house, nice big yard. Her cats, you know, sort of ruled the neighborhood too. On trash day. Her cats would be up and down everybody's trash bags on the side of the road, ripping them open, eating all the food out of there. Every trash day, two days a week, man. You know who had to clean up that? You know who had to clean up all the all the aftermath after the trash man came and took the trash. You did me. That was my job. When I was old enough, yeah, I had to go out there and do that. I hated it. Uh, in so much that at one point in time, I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I got something for you, cats. So every time I put out the trash, I pour bleach on the trash bags or around the trash bags at the bottom uh-huh. and on the side of trash bags and guess what them cats never came around again <laughs> this lady would this we we had a we had like this big open field that was out uh, a couple of uh you know lots away from where her house was uh and it was where like the kids would like go up and play we'd ride bikes up there jump our bikes and stuff like that because this is the 80s this is when we rode bikes you know what i'm saying this is the 90s and 80s when we rode bikes right so there were a couple times we were up there and we had found buried dead cats you know she had buried her dead cats up there man come on man come on G take them to the take them to the animal hospital or whatever and do that but no nah, man so so from that lady alone you know I was never have never been and probably will never be a cat fan death to all cats is what I say and I'm allergic to them because of the, because of the dander so you know if it was me I wouldn't have had a cat in the first place. Uh, yeah, so there's that. Um, so no, nah, man, um, you know, sort of after what I talked about earlier, you know, cleaning up after your animals, uh, uh, you know, after they poop on the floor in your house, just think about diarrhea just happening everywhere, man, on your carpet, your hardwood, you know, that cat sleeping in your bed. Come on, man. Nah, I'm not having that. It got to go. And I got to go after my friend and get any kind of money that I can or any kind of help that I can, you know, or at least an admission and say, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. Just tell me I'm sorry. I hear you. Got to go, though. Got to go. That's crazy. That's crazy. Def Sue, my friend, though. Okay. Um, Let's see here. (sighs) Okay. So, <laughs> all right, so here is <laughs> a confession of remorse. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is, uh, you know, quite interesting. Um, I don't know. Um, and, and, you know, when, when, when you hear this, uh, you know, I just want to know if, if you've ever done this too. So, Confession of remorse. I have two remorse confessions, actually. So the first one was, uh, I feel so ashamed right now. I got really high after a long day of moving to my new apartment. After the long haul, I wanted to relax, get stoned, and watch Netflix. I realized after a while, I was fucking starving and darted to the kitchen. We didn't bring any food in the move, uh, but there was a half bottle of ranch and two butter packets. I was so desperate, I slid the cap open with ease and flipped the ranch bottle 180 degrees in my hand and poured it onto the now open butter packets. (laughs) I picked them up like a fun size Snickers and slid them down. I now realize what I've done and cannot wash the taste out of my mouth. I just ate a stick of butter with ranch. I'm degraded. Nice. It's <laughs> nice. Have you ever ate anything? Have you ever eaten anything um, that uh, you know that that you regret? Just the, right after the fact. That I regret? No. Um, Not booty. Not booty. Nope. Nope. And a nope. 
from me for that. Uh, I'm trying to think. Let me think. That I regret. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, those 25 hot wings from uh, Pluckers. I kind of re- <laughs> my stomach and my butt regretted that. Yep. Uh, yeah, that that's the the one thing that comes to mind. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's the one thing that comes to mind. I can't think of anything to else. Think. I mean, you know, every now and then if I eat something late at night, you know, I will be like, dang, I shouldn't have eaten that. It's too late at night. Or, you know, mm-hmm. I, I feel sick now, blah, blah, blah. But I'll tell you what, man. Um, so if y'all don't know what Fuddruckers is, uh, you know, Fuddruckers is like a burger and fry chain, you know, down in the south, really down in Texas. Uh, you know, mainly, and I went there a lot, you know, as a kid, or maybe not a lot as a kid, but my dad liked to go in there because he loved their burgers. Uh, you know, so, so after college, you know, I was, still lived in the Fort Worth area. Um, and there's a FUD Records over by, uh, you know, a couple of my friends' house. So, you know, we go over there and chill out every now and then, like not often, probably like once, you know, every couple of months or whatever, and just have, you know, have like a burger. And they had this challenge. You know, it's called like the one pound burger challenge. You know what I'm saying? You know, like man versus food style. So one day, you know, I went and I asked them, I was like, what's up with this challenge? They're like, you know what, man, if you eat this one pound burger with all the fixings that we drop in there and the mm-hmm. fries, you know, then, you know, we'll take a, we'll take a Polaroid of you and put it, put you on our, like, you know, our champion wall right here. All right. I looked at the champion wall and there were only like eight pictures. So I was like, bet, let's do this. So, um, yeah, man. So I downed this one pound burger and like an order of like extra large fries, you know, and this was, this was a beast. It was, <laughs> it was massive. It was a one pound. Okay. So the burger patty itself was one pound and okay. then all the fixings on top of that. Uh, it was, it was heavy, man. It was heavy. I swear. I'll tell you this, man. The next day oh. and the next day and the next day, I was not really that hungry. I bet. really feel like the next two or three days, the next two or three days, man, I was on the toilet. You know how we talked about your booty hole dipped in lava? That's what yeah. it felt like mm. the next couple of days. Interesting. It was a s- slow moving burger. Let's just say that. But no, <laughs> man, I, I, I felt so good. I was so proud of myself. I was like, I'm on the wall. You know, I'll go back. I'll go back there, you know, every now and then and, uh, you know, look at my picture. This is the one over by Hewlin. Uh, you know, so if you're ever in that area, okay. you know, stop by, see if they still have the wall. But no, nah, man, I was I was sick, man. I, I was I was not feeling good. And I was like, never again. Huh. Never again. For some reason, I think I could accomplish that. I think I could do that because I could I could I could down like a double quarter pounder with cheese. No problem. Yeah. For McDonald's. Let's see here. But interesting. Let's see here. Quarter pounders. Burger challenge. Let me see what their burger challenge was. Was it one pound? Three pound. Oh, three pound. It's three pound burger. Three pound. My bad. I'm sorry. Three pound burger challenge. That's my bad. I got you. So three pound. There you go. Okay, that's a different story. Yeah. All right. Not a, I mean, they had that challenge at I some mean, of their was restaurants it around the country. At least good. It was Did a tasty it burger, man. Yeah. It was a tasty burger. You know, like a Royale with cheese. Mm. Royale with cheese. Yeah, it was. It was definitely three pounds because I'm looking at and and then as I was saying, I was like one pound. Hold on a second. That's just like, I mean, that's just like, like three burger patties or something like that. But nah, it was it was massive. And I was sick. But, you know, it was definitely, you know what a mufalada is? You know? Yes. Obviously, you know what a mufalada is. Like an extra large sandwich. Uh, yeah, this thing was huge. And your man was sick. You know, I was hurt. I was hurt, dog. A lot of lettuce. It's like a, like a quarter head of lettuce. You know, like, I don't know, like four or six tomato slices. Dang. My dude looked like me. Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm gonna send you a picture. This dude looked like me, pre burger challenge, right? Looked good. I was like, yeah, I'm ready for this. Let me send you this picture. I looked happy. I was ready to go. Here, I just sent it to you. Next thing you know, after the burger challenge was over, I was like, I had like this little smile on my face, but I was hurting. I was hurting bad. I was, I was real sick. 
<laughs> anyway, so yeah, never ate a stick <laughs> is, of butter. Is that, is that the burger? That is the burger. That's you actual. That. Wow. Yeah. So you ate that whole thing. Awesome. Yeah, and the fries. You got to have the fries, too. Mm. You got to have the fries. It's, you got you got to do both or else you don't get to do it. Was it like yeah, a time limit you, you had to feature it? Do it in? Nah, they were just like in one sitting uh, with no help. So that's it. Wow. There is this so, place up here, though. Uh, it's, called, it's called Lucky 7. Let's see here. Lucky... Let's see if I can find it. Lucky so for the people seven. listening to this, this burger is probably as round as a frisbee. Yep. Yeah. Roughly Maybe. as round as a frisbee, and probably like I'm gonna say, just from looking at this angle, maybe about six inches tall. Yep. Yeah. So there's this. It was. It's insane. So um, up here in Utah, uh, there's this place I have yet to I've yet to go to, but I have uh, several coworkers who've been there, uh, and they love it. Uh, this place called Lucky Thirteen. Uh, and the unique thing about Utah is this place is a bar, so you can't go there with your kids. Um, you know, it's it's a bar and a restaurant uh, that was just, you know, it was mainly just like a restaurant that anybody could go to. And then they had these, you know, liquor laws that came out and basically they had to deem themselves either a bar and restaurant, a bar or a restaurant. And uh, I'll tell you the distinction. 21 and older, bar only, right? Bar only 21 and older. Makes sense. Restaurant, anybody could go, but they had several alcohol restrictions. Uh, If it's a bar and a restaurant, they have to have a section that is specifically sectioned off, maybe by a wall, maybe by a partition, Um, you know, some cases by like basically like a uh, like the velvet rope that says this area is 21 and up. You know, no one under age 21 can can enter without uh you know, without um, being accompanied by an adult. Uh, and it's a crazy law they got going on here. But anyway, it's Lucky 13 place. It's supposed to be the bomb. So it's a challenge. Here we go. Finish the Big Benny and the Lucky 13 burger by yourself in one hour. And we'll pay you $200 cash. Right? Mm-hmm. And it costs $200, right? So, So let's see here. What's it called? The Big Benny and the Lucky 13. So the Big Benny is $17 by itself. It's a foot tall burger. Mm-mm. It has bacon, Mm-mm. ham, cheddar, Swiss, caramelized onions, Lucky 13 sauce, and 28 ounces of fresh ground chuck. Right? Nice. So it's that one. And then the Lucky 13 burger, which is just basically a burger and, uh, you know, a burger patty with cheese. That's right. It. But you got to finish that in an hour. And it's a foot tall burger. Think of that. It's like five patties of meat. That sounds great. That sounds you know what? Amazing. It looks awesome. I haven't tried it, but you know what? One of these days I will. One of these days I will. I'm going to send you a picture of this. It's a foot tall. There we go. So, was that? Uh, oh, I was going to say there's this burger at K-Pop Burger that mm-hmm. um, here is called the Big Bang. And let me see if I can find a picture. Hold on. And it looks similar to that. It actually looks bigger. Let me see. Let me see if I yeah. can find it. Uh, I'll bang. just send you up. The Big Bang. So, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. I want to try it, but um, I just know my health is a... Uh, I don't want to jack up my health, but it's like more full important. of meat, full of bacon, full of cheese. Yeah, my health is more important than a burger. So... Now, see, it'd be cool if yeah. you did something like that and you split it with a couple of people. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, you wouldn't be in it for the challenge, but you'd just be in it just to taste it, you know? Yeah, for sure. That'd be different. All right. I just sent you a pic. It's like number nine on that, see here. that picture. Let's see here. Like 15 bucks, $16. Oh, dang. That looks, that looks massive. That looks tasty. Yeah. This is their menu? So. Uh, yeah, that's part of it. But they sell all kinds of stuff over there. The chicken wings are great. Yeah. That looks good. Man, that's in, that's that's down there, huh? That's in Texas. Yeah. Yep. Man, that looks good. That looks good. Wow. It looks very 
good, good, but bad for your arteries. All right, here we go. <laughs> so next, uh, next confession. Um, all right. Let's see here. Where is it? Oh no, it was removed. It said, I'm pretty good at typing with my nipples. Interesting. Um, it says some morning on cold days, uh, you know, I reply to WhatsApp comments with my nipples. Why? That's okay. from Sasha Meraki. Oh, okay. So it's girl. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever used any of your parts to type nope. that aren't your fingers? Nope. Nope. And nope. <laughs> yep. That's it. Nope. <laughs> uh, okay. I, uh, I've used my nose. About it. Oh, to right. type to type like a reply. That's it. I haven't used any other appendages, as far as I can remember. <laughs> All right, maybe my toe, maybe my toe. Whatever. Anyway, here we go. So, some people, let us know if you ever used anything other than your fingers to type a reply, or to type anything. To use your typewriter, use your computer, whatever. You know, do work while you're uh, on. Uh, you know, while you're on a work trip, I don't know. Uh, here we go. Um, the last confession. <laughs> this is a remorse. Uh, okay. So, this is from Tony P. Casso. <sighs> when I was eight, as a prank, being my other friend had the bright idea we we're going to burn some trash debris next to our friend's window to wake him up that morning. And so we lit a piece of paper on fire, tossed into the debris, then the fire sparked to a huge flame we couldn't pass out. Uh, we couldn't put out. The fire grew and grew and wouldn't stop burning even when it reached the tree and started burning the branches and the wood paneling off the roof. We panicked and ran away back to my friend's house to play Xbox the rest of the day. Tragically, our friend and his parents weren't home. <laughs> Their house completely burned down. We knew we did it but didn't ever say anything. He and his family lost everything because our stupid little prank. He moved away that winter and we didn't see him ever again. I've attempted to reach out to him, confess to him, but can't find him on any social media. So I'm here confessing what I've done because I'm in my 20s now and it's still a burden I carry with me um, with no hope of finding closure. I'm a horrible person. I burned down my friend's house when I was eight. Wow. Wow. I mean, do you, do you remember? I, I'm sure we did it some of the times when you came to visit, like on on uh, Fourth of July or on uh, like New Year's days. Any of those days we'd pop fireworks. Like we would do a quote unquote bonfire of all the of all the paper. Um, were you ever in any of those situations with us when you came to visit my house? No. Or we just like light up the big red or so. whatever. Uh, that was pretty much big it. Big red, man. yeah. And big red in firework terms is like a big, like twenty dollar or thirty dollar packet full of fireworks, and it was just mm. a big red cardboard box. Um, but no, man. I, I mean, I remember you know starting many bonfires with my friends uh, and my siblings, uh, you know, on firework days. But we never burned down anything. Like that's mm-hmm. it's like the prank went way too wrong. Yeah. Did you ever have a prank that went wrong? No nah, man, I I never really I can't say I did pranks and stuff like that. I mean I just wouldn't think about doing doing anything of that type of nature. I mean I can't think of anything. I mean of course high school and junior high was long, long ago. Many things have kind of slipped through my memory. So I couldn't tell you. Um, I mean, I mean, the one prank I remember, I didn't cause it. I didn't do it. But um, I, had, I might have said it on the show, like there was a uh, one of our teachers was a. Uh, what did he have? He had a disease, debilitating disease where he couldn't uh, couldn't really he couldn't really walk. And it, it, wow. he could walk, but it was hard for him to walk. Um, and I forgot what the disease was, but somebody put a thumbtack on his chair no and every time he, he sat on he tried to get up and he kept sitting back down so it was up and down so he kept poking himself with the thumbtack 
you know. So it's messed up, yeah. That wasn't me, people. I didn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's about the one I thing. I don't know I what they were trying to accomplish. Maybe they were just trying to think, oh, he's gonna sit on it once, but apparently he sat on it multiple times. Wow. That's that's horrible, man. <laughs> that's horrible. Um to do that to, to that type of teacher. But then again, you know, when you're in school, like you just do like some crazy stuff. So that also is like something that probably there's some people who definitely would have thought of. So, mm-hmm. uh, wow, that's crazy though. Um, let's see here. Cool. Well, I think uh, I think it's that time. Is it that time? Is it that time? I hope it's that time. Yeah, I, I guess think it is it's that, that time. time where we, yeah, where we, uh, you know, talk about uh, tapping that love box. So JQ's that careless whisper. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, you know we we talk about tapping your love box. So, uh, if you're drinking liqueur water and love the taste of cockroach insecticide, mm. tap your love box. Nice, 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 nice. <laughs> oh boy. If you thought Millennia Trump looked like a <laughs> a European colonist on her Africa trip, tap your love box. She looks man. straight out of like the 1930s or something. 1830s. Colonizers, man. Colonizers. I, t- I swear. They're everywhere. You know, whether they be from Eastern, they be from Western Europe or Eastern Europe, you know, or Eastern Europe and then, you know, somehow become the wife of a president. So I said, man, if you and your friends, you know, are planning uh, your next mancation, uh, you know, to go to Jamaica or Miami or, or uh, I don't know, Bali, tap your love box. Because I didn't know that that was a thing. I didn't know that we called it mancation when dudes take a vacation together. I mean, it just <laughs> Have you ever taken a vacation with your friends? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, I, I think I have, but that was years ago, like, I don't know, we ain't call it a mancation, though, like, we weren't, like, I don't know, it was different, it was different, I guess it was the same, but it was, it was like, we weren't going to the beach, you know, like, we weren't oiling up each other's shoulders and stuff like that, uh, uh, you know, it was just, just dudes going on, like, a fun trip, you know what I'm saying, I don't know, have you ever been on a mancation? Never, 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 never been on one. I mean, we always talked about it. Friends and I always talked about it. Didn't call it a mancation, but always talked about going somewhere. We just never did. Never did. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. You guys out there be going on mancations? Let us know what 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 your version of a mancation is. You know, I, I really want to really want to find out. Find out some people I mean, go to Magic big. City. Some people go to Vegas. Man. Yeah, I mean, Bunny yeah, Ranch in Vegas. That's a man vacation. I mean, yeah. you know, it was what's that place? Uh, there's a place, uh, Rick's, I think it's called out there on the east, on the west, far or west side of Fort Worth. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that, like a couple. We go them. for lunch there with some of my friends, like way back in the day. That was our mancation. Yeah, that's about it. Because the steak was good. The New York strip, you know, that gravy they put on that New York strip, that was bomb. So we had to go and enjoy it. Um, I'm sure you love the strip. I'm sure you love that New York strip steak. It was tasty. So, anyway, nah, but but yeah. Anyway, so yeah, on to the next love box. On the next All right. If you if you're the type of person who'll be absolutely furious that your million dollar piece of artwork self destructed after you bought it, tap your love box. <laughs> tap your love box. 
And if people don't know what I'm talking about, Banksy, everybody's favorite art troll, art <laughs> bandit, sold a painting for like one point, I don't know how it meant, one point one million dollars or something like that. And then right as the person bought it, it started to shred itself. It's the greatest thing ever. Great. They're crazy. <laughs> so wonderful. That's it's hilarious. Um, I don't know, man. I uh, I would I'd be very sad. Uh, but then, if you know the artist, you know you know that there's potential for some tomfoolery to go on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so. But yeah, now that yeah, person could actually resell that painting for a lot more money because people are wanting to buy it now. Yeah, yeah. Like, yo, you had a painting uh, that had a shredder built in the bottom and nobody knew until you bought it. Dog, I pay you two times what you what you got it for. Oh. Yeah. So it sold for one point four million. So how much? So how much do you think that it could resell for now? Like, if somebody tried to buy it the next day, today after that happened. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure they could get at least. Then go for double. It could, yeah, it could possibly go for double. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. That's but of, of course, yeah, that person will probably keep it. I mean, I'm pretty sure they were yeah. like ticked off initially, but yeah, if they know Banksy, they know they know something crazy. They know what they're getting into. Yeah, they know what they're getting into. Yeah. He would not yeah. just sell you a little painting like that without something crazy going on. If you uh, think the comments from uh, from one Michael B. Jordan are foolish this week, talking about how there's no uh, you know black mythology out there, you know black history, tap your little box. Can you put that into context since you read the article? A <laughs> uh, well, part of the article. <laughs> well, anyway, um, let me see if I could quickly find that piece of information. And of course, when I'm looking for it, I can't find it. But yeah, anyway, he said something to the effect of when he was talking to Vanity Fair, if I'm not mistaken, Vanity Fair, that, you know, we as black people don't have any mythology, black folklore, or black mythology, I should say. He said creating our own mythology is very important because it helps dream. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, like I was telling you before we started recording, there's a ton of black mythology. It doesn't have to necessarily be, oh, hey, this is Thor or, or you know, yeah. Zeus or anything like that. That doesn't have to be that way. But there's a lot of African mythology and, and folklore that goes on, you know, Af- African spirituality and things like that that, that have... Mm-hmm. Uh, mythological you know uh, I guess associations so I mean it's just yeah. I guess uh, educating yourself of course you're not going to be taught this stuff in school they're not going to teach it it's, it's up to you to go out and seek information I mean I'm constantly trying to teach myself stuff I'm not saying I know everything but mm-hmm. you know picking up a book yeah. is a great thing don't rely on picking up a book is a great thing it's absolutely right it's a wonderful thing you know don't rely on your teachers in school or your or the TV don't rely on the idiot box you remember those commercials a mind is a terrible thing to waste yep yeah. and I don't waste it y'all I think a lot of people are wasting their minds these days to be honest mm-hmm. yep yep Shout out to Wulong Talks for recommending the book to me that I, I hadn't. Uh, I know I've seen the cover for it. I just never read it, so I picked it up and currently reading, and it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. Nice, nice, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, let us know. So, this is my question for you: If you are cautiously optimistic after hearing that the Toys R Us bankruptcy auction has been canceled amidst plans for a revival tap your love box heard about that hashtag Jeffrey the giraffe may be coming back Jeffrey's coming back you know? that's cool I like that yeah. 
she probably gonna you know she just took a little time just a little vacation some time off mm-hmm. now the thing is yeah. if they do come back mancation a giraffe mancation a giraffe mancation <laughs> if they do come back will the stores be as big as before or will they mm-hmm. downsize uh, I don't I, I don't know man um, cause I thought I there was know, a that, lot of useless thing. stuff in there Oh yeah, there, there was tons of useless stuff, and I think what they tried to do, you know, which I think we talked about at some point in time, they they tried too much. They tried to get too much stuff to try to reach too many masses, you know, different segments of people, and they couldn't sell enough stuff of all of their stuff. Um, so I don't know. I think they'd probably definitely be scaled down. But it said that uh, when Toys R Us left, uh, you know, the the toy industry or you know the um, you know industry as a whole. It left an eleven billion dollar hole in the toy industry. Eleven billion dollars. Think about all those people. You know the the toys that the toys that you uh, always review. Uh, you know on your YouTube vids. Uh, uh-huh. Shout out to YouTube vids. Uh, there's a shameless plug right here. Uh, uh-huh. But the toys that you review by by you know a lot of these um, independent artists uh, that are out there. Yeah. Man, just think if, if they could just get one percent. Uh, you know of that eleven billion dollar hole. Uh, uh, you know that would be massive for some of these guys. Um, yeah, half a percent, you know, would be massive. So, yeah, man, eleven billion dollar hole. So, so the people who were trying to, you know, who basically bought out, uh, or I guess the banks, you know, who, who sort of owned um, Toys R Us, were like, nah, it's too uh, valuable of a brand to let just go away. So, um, people try to bring it back somehow. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, Toys R Us, Babies R Us. Still saying. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what they do. All right. What else we got? Mm. What else do we have? Uh, If you are not surprised that Brett Kavanaugh was confirmed by the Supreme Court after all that foolishness, tap your little box. Because, you know, through all the, the talk, through the confessions and professions by the you know, by the people who were, uh, you know, sexually assaulted by him. Um, I, I'm not surprised because that's the way America does it. You know, that's that's why our our, our uh, uh, political system does it. Like, oh, you did something wrong? Cool, <laughs> you're in. <laughs> that's that's, wow. that's 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 well, that guy there is something else. Anyway, you know, if you'd be uh, if you'd be su- not surprised that Kanye would enlist the the vocal stylings of Trump for interludes on his new album, Tap Your Love Box. He's not, I don't know if he's gonna do it. No, he didn't do it. But I'm just saying it would be oh. funny if he did do it. It'd be like three or four interludes with Trump <laughs> talking about Man. make America great again. You know. And then you get him on yesterday, the yesterday. Oh, man. That, that would actually be kind of... That, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I'd be curious to hear that. Like a, a Trump speaking effort. The Donald over, Trump, Kanye. Over rap. a hip-hop beat. Yeah. Not really Trump rapping, but Trump like talking in. It's huge. Like Ric Flair it's style. Huge. Yeah, there you go. Enormous. It's huge. Enormous. I don't have small hands. Enormous. It's huge. Yeah. It, it, it would be terrible if you are um, <laughs> if you would get mad uh, at your baby for accidentally shredding over a thousand dollars of your cash tap your little box I posted, I posted that on, on Twitter oh was that hey, no I was saying I posted that on Twitter a few days ago saying what would you do I, don't, I honestly don't know what, what I'd do what would you do I don't know He's you know, two years old. I mean, it, how? Yeah. And yeah. partly it'll be partly your fault. You got your money out where the kid could get it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Should be happy he didn't stick his hand in the shredder. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. It's real, right? But yeah. yeah. Over $1,000 of your money. Shred it gone. By your baby. That would be wow. horrible. The good thing is you can still use it. Wait. You put it back together. <laughs> you take it back together. Yeah, but in a sense, yeah. <laughs> our kids pretty much destroy thousands of dollars anyway when they waste stuff. So you, 
think about it, when you honestly think about it, they do waste a lot of stuff that could in turn add to a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. Wow. It says, white woman cop will spend the next 15 years in jail for um, making up a story about being shot by a black man. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. Finally, mm-hmm. a little bit of a little bit of recompense. Is that lady still free in Texas? Uh, oh, uh, whatever her down. name is, who shot the black dude? Uh, I don't. I don't know if she's free. I don't know if she's been convicted yet, but I don't. I don't think she's been released from prison. I could be wrong though. Or jail. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. crazy crazy all right um i don't know man i think that's all i got right now yeah i am sorry people i'm tired anyway oh yeah did you get texted by donald trump this week i think everybody did i honestly thought the purge was about to happen but man i thought it was too dog i thought it was about to all go down yep i i was i was ready i was Lock stock in, well, not two smoking barrels, but one of them would have been smoking. All right, let's get out of here. Uh, All right. Twitter and Instagram, hashtag Blackout Pod, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, and Spreaker, where you could hear a few episodes on Spreaker because we didn't purchase the, the larger version. I don't know if we should or not. I think I like pod being better. Anyway, hashtag blackoutpod at gmail.com is where you can send us email. Hit us up with the voicemail. 3853BLAKPC3853252572. Send us a confession there. If you need some relationship advice, uh, hit us up there too. We'll try to we'll try to sort it out for you and give you some advice to where you don't uh, like you know do something stupid uh, relations relations hit, hit up Etsy get yourself some some spices from the hooks rubs put it all over your food all anything you eat even the stuff you don't eat put it on there it makes it smell better gives it great flavor hit up bossboxes.store after that get yourself a Boss Box subscription, ten percent off on your Boss Box subscription when you hit out Blackout Ten in that checkout. Yep, you can play some cool games, you know, some good accessories, some little snacks and energy drinks. It's cool. It's all good. Mm-hmm. Do that, and then you can listen to us mm-hmm. while you're playing your game. Joe can. And uh, where would they find your um, your your toy? Uh, uh, your tour review episodes. Oh, my tour review episode. Uh, yeah, man. Talk about that. Yeah, Don't let I mean, that go. Yeah, I mean, if you want to, if you're into like, uh, you know, custom toys and, and uh, art toys and vinyl toys and things like that, you could go to YouTube and type in John J O N underscore E underscore five V E. So it says Johnny Five. Yeah, Johnny just just five. like. It's alive, yeah, just like the robot from that classic '80s movie. So yeah, you could hit me up there. You know, you can see some of the toys I reviewed. I reviewed the uh, latest iPhone 10s Max that I need to uh, edit that video. And me and my son did a couple reviews on some other toys that I just got in that I need to edit and toss up. You know, these uh, these toys aren't cheap, people. That's why my videos are like two or three months between so yeah sure maybe i'll do some uh some some throwback reviews on some other toys that i had before i started this channel but we'll see we shall see and what about you are y'all still doing the go check those out the uh yeah we're still doing games and grub man if you go on to onto youtube games and grub games the ampersand you know that and sign grubs uh uh or grub i'm sorry grub uh, yeah, um, 
you know, me and my kids are still doing it. It's been a minute. Uh, just because, you know, there's uh, been a lot of stuff going on with work and life and just haven't been able to put anything up in a minute. But, yeah, we have some stuff in the works that we're trying to put up. The other thing is, for Hook Shrubs and Spices, uh, got some great news. If you go on to uh, this website, um, it's called landman.com. So, L-A-N-D-M-A-N-N.com. Search for recipes. You know whose recipes at the top of the page? Hook shrubs and spices, smoke and sweetness ribs. Hashtag we smoke meat. Um, yeah, man, it's it's a big it's a big thing because Landman is a you know an international uh, you know smoker company. Um, you know they make grills and, and pits and all kinds of stuff. But it's actually the one that we use for hook shrubs and spices. Uh, uh, you know demo videos and whatnot. And yeah, they reached out to me. Uh, I sent them some. I sent them some rub. Uh, you know probably about I don't know t- maybe two years ago. Uh, and one of their celebrity chefs had been using it. Um, probably about two and a half years ago, been using it. Chef Stu uh, with his creations or what is it? Uh, one of his kitchens um, that he's been. Um, uh, uh, you know, teaching kids, uh, you know, how to cook up in that, um, you know, that Maryland DC area. Uh, uh, and you know, I've been, you know, sort of messaging Landman back and forth for a while. And, uh, at some point in time, probably about a month ago, they're like, Hey man, uh, you know, if you have any recipes, we'd love to post them. Uh, you can highlight your spices, you know, and if you use one of our smokers, you know, we definitely, uh, would appreciate that, uh, you know, putting that information in there as well and so yeah man i have several recipes i've sent them probably two so far probably gonna send another one but yeah uh they said they put it up so there you go landman.com look under the link for recipes and you'll find that hooks rubs and spices smoke and sweetness ribs and i'm gonna tell you this is a quick rib cook it is not the three two one method this is like a two hour method you know you'll have some tasty fall off the bone ribs in Two hours plus maybe like another fifteen or twenty minutes to let some let some uh, sauce caramelize on top. But hey, dog, check that out. Give it some votes, you know. Give it some stars so these people will keep putting up my putting up those uh, recipes. Uh, you know, we definitely appreciate that. That's cool. There you go. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Gonna see right. you on uh see see hooks, rubs, and spices on the food channel. Maybe even have. Man, I'm telling you, dog. What was that barbecue show that they had? Uh, grill was it BBQ Matt? What is it called? Grill Masters or something like that? Barbecue Barbecue Pit Masters. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Pit Masters. Pit Masters. Man, I used to watch that all the time. Yeah, Barbecue Pit is a, a really good show, man. Um, you know, I enjoy watching it. Um, you know, and just learning techniques. So, it's like, really look at that show, smoke ring. Look at that smoke ring. That's right? Look at that. Look at that great pink smoke ring. Um, yeah, so pretty dope. Anyway, yeah, check it out. Uh, you know, much appreciated. Uh, give us some five stars. Um, you know, and do the recipe. Really, like it's it's really easy if you follow the steps. It's easy. That's for pork ribs. Got you some good ribs. Yeah, pork ribs. Yeah, baby backs is the easiest one, just because you know less meat, less bone. You know, for sure, all flavor. Oh, all right, cool, man. Sure. Uh, all right, I'm blacking out. Peace. All right, I'm, I'm blacking out too. Later. Deuces. <laughs>